green tea, and we combine it with our uh, mint, our peppermint that comes from the Pacific Northwest. So no matter what your palate might be in terms of green tea, if you like the taste of mint tea, you will now be getting the benefits of green tea at the same time. We blended the two together. So that's our organic, oh actually what we have up there on the screen, that's our straight peppermint tea. We have two products. So that's our straight peppermint tea. Oh, there we go. Now we've got uh, Ultramile, okay. So that's it. So we've got it correct. Sorry, that was me. So no, there's, so there's the organic peppermint because there's a couple different varieties we that have, Andrew we has. Have, we have we have organic peppermint tea yeah. on its own, but then we have the peppermint with green tea. Right. And that's what we're looking at there. And that's really for me. Peppermint tea is wonderful. It's great to have after a meal. And, and where I got the idea to create this product and create a green tea that Americans would love because obviously in France, they had a similar problem. So Muriel is French, or often in France, in fact, we'll be there soon, uh, we're gonna see her family. So um, if you go to France and you get, you say, can I have some mint tea? Um, what you will get is you will get green mint tea. You'll get thé vert à la menthe. You'll get green tea with, mont, with mint, mint. And so because. it's, but, but so it's very interesting that that's how they deliver. If you ask if you ask for green tea, you'll get mint green tea. Wow! So it's so that was the idea that maybe if I did exactly what they do in France, take an exceptional green tea, combine it with great mint, that I'll now have a green tea that Americans love. So that's what we've done, and that's and it's I think it's rated. Well, oh, and let me tell it's, you, it's a perfect balance yep. and harmony of flavors. Well, imagine for a green tea product mm. in America to have 85 reviews, we, we don't feature this on air often, 85 reviews um, to have 71, well 71 and nine, four and five star reviews, 80 out of 85 or four and five star reviews. So if you, if you want to embrace the benefits of green tea, and there are few things that we can consume that when you look at the epidemiology, when you look at big studies involving millions of people and their behaviors and lifestyles, there are few behaviors that you can identify as healthier than being a regular consumer of green tea, which is why I drink green tea constantly throughout the day. And if you could do that, it would be a wonderful way to replace the water you drink with some healthy green tea. It's still just water. I'll take and that, one, that picture we had down there, that's my, that's my refrigerator. I've if never you, seen this picture if you, before. If you read the shelves, what that says on the far right is, te, that says thé vert, which means green tea. And then the thé vert is on the right, and then on the left you'll see chamomile menthe. So you'll see the, the teas, the teas in the morning that I have are the teas on the right, and then I migrate to the left, and then the plastic cups are what I take them in. So that's my, that's literally my refrigerator at home. That, it looks so organized. I, and, and you don't know how grudgingly Muriel gives up that real estate on that shelf. That's my only shelf in the refrigerator. It, it's so organized and I love it. I wish my refrigerator was like that. That's because it's my spot. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to bring my green tea with me. Um, Andrew, a lot of us, we suffer from a lack of energy and um, not particularly a, a, a acute minds where we kind of seem stressed or flustered and cloudy almost on a daily basis. CoQ10 has always seemingly been a wonderful product for that. Why your Co uh, CoQ10? Well, it's, it's interesting that um, typically what's being sold and promoted for energy are things that are stimulants. And there you see all these five hour energy, three hour energy, whatever they are. You'll see all sorts of different products that are basically just stimulants or calories that are trying to, in that way, provide more energy, which that's just a stimulant and afterwards you're left no better off than you were or worse off than you were before. CoQ10 is something that I've always positioned as the common sense, logical, sort of conservative, rational way to create more energy because what CoQ10 does it allows your body, it's the central molecule in all energy production in all the trillions of cells in your body. And, and it's fascinating, it's one of those things that I've been told when I say this, it's one of those moments for a lot of people that are sort of like a, a eureka moment, like wow, never realized that. That we don't think about the fact that every cell in our body, whether it's a little skin cell in our toe, or whether it's a cell in our arteries and veins somewhere in our body, a muscle cell, a cell in our heart, or our lungs, or our liver, or kidneys. Every single cell in our body is independently required to produce its own energy. It can't rely on its neighbor for energy. Here, we're in a studio, the lights are on, the energy is coming from a power plant somewhere. So every single cell must have its own power plants. 
and every single cell actually does. They're called mitochondrion. And mitochondrion rely on coenzyme Q10 to move the electrons around that gives us energy, which is another thing that's one of those eureka moments that the energy we all experience, that you're experiencing to watch me, to do whatever you might be doing at your house right now, for me to do what I'm doing, to think, to move, to stand here, that energy solely comes from the movement of electrons in the cells of my body, in the <laughs> mitochondrion in the cells of my body. So our ability to experience life is basically just a bunch of electrons moving around in our cells that gives us the ability to be here and exist. I mean, it's mind blowing when you think about it. But as you dig into that process, all you do is identify the indispensable role that CoQ10 plays. And, and what we have here is we did this, um, and I think, we, so we've got, yeah, we've got the different versions. Yeah. We did this in October. We're gonna keep this around as a special thing here and there. That we did our typical CoQ10 200 milligrams, but kind of as I did with our Essential One with 2000 IU of vitamin Yesterday. D. If you wanna get your vitamin D, because vitamin D is so absolutely essential, you can get our CoQ10 with 1,000 IU of vitamin D or with 2,000 IU of vitamin D, and guess what? The reason why there's only one price graphic up there they're all the same price. Fabulous. So whether you're getting your CoQ10 200, which of course comes with a full B complex, and this is designed as a perfect product to be taken with my Essential One, my Omega-3s. They're all designed and balanced and formulated to work together. But you, you have the choice whether you want the vitamin D at 1,000 or 2,000, or just, as we've always done it, the CoQ10 200, which contains, of course, 400 milligrams of vitamin C. It also contains a full B complex. I think for so many of us, it's so easy, again, uh, with the energy drinks or the extra a cup of coffee or we go to these kind of easy places to get more focus, to feel more alert. Folks, the answer's here. It's a wonderful all natural product with no fillers or binders or lubricants or preservatives or artificial colors. It's all good, it's all genuine and we'd love to send you one. Every single size is on a special price, of course. Um, there's a couple things that I would love to do. Number one is um, tell you that Andrew's facility, talking of energy, is a special place. Many of you have not realized maybe that Andrew's uh, 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 amazing place in Henderson, Nevada is all solar powered. Here's a, people are shocked when when they see the sheer size, the number of solar pa panels, no. is it fully solar supported? Oh, it is. We, we, we actually generate a bit more power than we use. So we are, we are giving away some of our power, wow. which others get to benefit from. So we generate more power than we need. So, and, and I was talking before about how responsible we are in terms of the, the environmental characteristics of the plastic we use in our bottles, that it's not virgin resin, which we were the driving force in changing that. So it, it's something that, again, solar power, we have no carbon footprint. I actually, um, there was some land that was damaged in Arkansas that was clear cut. All the forest was removed and it was kind of damaged land. So what I did is a while back I bought this land and we cleared the land and we replanted it with forest. Wow. So we pl replanted that forest so we could offset the carbon footprint of, of literally every bottle we've ever shipped since I started my company in 1979. So I, I kind of like to adhere when I, when I, as I said before, I love going out in the wilderness and mountain biking yeah. or running or hiking trails. And, and I follow that adage that um, whatever you do there, the only thing you leave behind are your footprints. And so it's something that if I'm out there and I see stuff, I'll pick it up and try to bring it back. Now, where does this come from? Being environmentally aware, being very eco-conscious, where did you learn that or where did you find that inspiration from? I would, ha I would have to say it just comes from um, my parents, uh, I guess, raised me to be a responsible citizen. Mm. And, that, and we all perceive things differently. Some people don't think the environment is a problem or, but our world is, and maybe it's the scientist in me, our world is an enclosed system. It's a sealed system. Mm. We create an incredible amount of waste, the, the seven billion humans that exist on this planet. And I think it's incumbent upon us, especially, not meaning to get political, but especially since it looks like the political focus is shifting away from prioritizing our planet and our environment. And that's what we're giving our children and our grandchildren. So I think it's up to us and, and 
unfortunately, my company is a small company. Um, it's really up to, to business owners, hopefully the big business owners, to make decisions that are in the best interests of our children and grandchildren by protecting our planet. Well, one of the wonderful things is that when you order an Andrew Lessman product, you know that you're doing great things in terms of your buying from such a, uh, a, a just a proud company that does things in the right fashion, the right manner. So you're helping to support in that way. I know that many of you have messaged and emailed plus, Andrew. Plus, I, even I was going to say, the mere fact that in 38 years we don't use chemical additives. Right. A typical vitamin is 25 to 50 percent chemical additives. Over those 38 years, we haven't, because if you, if you consume a chemical additive in your vitamins, it ends up in the environment. It right. goes through you. It's eventually in the environment. So with my products, we've virtually eliminated the, over the years, like almost 40 years, millions and millions and millions of pounds of additives never had to be m manufactured for my products, never were included in my products, and never had to be an assault on, on your body because my products are pure. It's good to know. I mean, these are important things. And I think that's why um, we love having Andrew here, certainly, is getting this information, getting the behind the scenes, understanding what goes into it. More than just a product on a shelf, we get to understand the backstory, the real story of how it came to be. I know many of you are certainly interested in hearing Andrew's answers to a lot of questions. You have a long list, Andrew, people oh, emailing have, you all the time. We have hundreds and hundreds of questions. I was looking at some here about the expiration date. Um, many folks are worried that if something uh, reaches its expiration date that it's going to be dangerous or damaging. The, the purpose of that expiration date is really to let you know that there's a statistical possibility that it might be mm. s some degree less than potency, but the products don't become dangerous. Even things like uh, calcium magnesium intensive care, the calcium magnesium in that product will still be good probably 100 years from now. Nonetheless, it still has an expiration date on it because nothing we make nothing with more than a three-year expiration date. Plus, when we make our products, we make our products immediately for the shows. So we're not warehousing products for long periods of time. We don't do that. The only warehouses are at my facility where we make the product, mm. then we ship immediately to HSN. And typically, products are manufactured on cycles of every 30 or 60 days. We're going to head over this way and talk about something else that's very important. Andrew, you make products for all different uh, situations and, and periods of life, as it were, and, and uh, ailments that we might be suffering from, things that may be able to help us along our journey. As you say, we all age and things happen to us when we age, whether we're uh, ladies or gentlemen. And in a moment, we'll talk about our prostate support for gentlemen. Um, this is a product that it was one of the original products that, that really acquired its own following about 20 or so, so years ago. And to show how long I've been doing this, when I made this product originally, I could not mention menopause or perimenopause when I talked about this product. Why? Because menopause and perimenopause at that time were considered a disease. And thus, no. if I was going to speak about how this product can reduce hot flashes, reduce, reduce the symptoms of menopause, I'd be speaking about a symptom of a disease. I'd be kind of classifying it as a drug. Oh, interesting. Obviously, the normal transition that every woman, woman will at some time in her life experience, that normal transition, is not a disease. It doesn't mean it's not a very powerful and potentially a, a very debilitating experience for some women, but it isn't a disease. And I think it's almost, not almost, it's kind of diminishing to women to classify that normal transition as being a disease. And I think our, our, our society struggles a wee bit. I, I guess I don't, maybe, because I was raised in a family that all of the strongest personalities, all of them women. Right, right. So, <laughs> it so, can be a sensitive subject. So I think in our society, a lot of us struggle with seeing women in, in positions of authority and things like that. And I think it's a thinking process that when you view menopause or perimenopause as a disease, mm. it sort of goes along with that kind of older thinking. So obviously, it's not a disease. It's not a symptom of a disease. It's part of a natural transition that can vary from, from person to person, from woman to woman. But the one thing we've been able to learn is that there are certain ingredients, and we learned this from the Asian diet. The best lessons I see out in diet in terms of large populations come from the Mediterranean diet and the Asian diet. Right. And what we learned from the Asian diet 
there are certain isoflavones that are present in food, and these isoflavones exert a hormonal balancing effect. And uh, the Ultimate Women's Wellness, it's a product that we have Women's Wellness and Ultimate Women's Wellness, they both contain the same natural soy isoflavones. And as far as I'm concerned, in terms of soy, you need to rely on your doctor's input, but all of the most current research on soy doesn't talk about soy in terms of increasing a risk of breast cancer, but actually just the opposite. But of course, you need to defer to your physician in that regard. But it's something that the research is very consistent in that regard recently. So you need to, of course, follow your doctor's counsel. But this is a wonderful product in terms of the natural hormonal balancing effects that are available to all of us. And, and it's a difficult time of life. And it can be anywhere from, say, 30s for some women to 50s for other women. But and for some women, it's, it's, a, it's nothing. It's a walk in the park. For others, uh, significant experience. Andrew, we talked a little bit about um, yesterday when we were on the air, actually. We talked about you being on HSN and how this kind of broke the mold into the way that uh, things were presented, certainly the way things were received. How important has it been for you to kind of be in charge and control the aspects of your business? What kind of difference has that made? <laughs> well, it wouldn't exist <laughs> if not. <laughs> That's no, the easy uh, answer it's, right there. It's, um, mine has been a very uh, unusual path. Um, and, uh, and again, starting my company 38 years ago, it's been a circuitous path. Um, but initially, on initially long ago on that other shopping channel, and and then there's another one. <laughs> there's another one. Yes, <laughs> rumor, rumor has it. Um, and then and then uh, about 20 years ago, I decided to to come here. And it's I think my style of representing my products, the way my products were sold previously, I just did seminars. So I just stood really? up in front of a large group and mostly I would stand up in front of doctors and talk about nutritional supplements and my products to doctors and the doctors would offer my products to their I patients. I did not know that. So, so it has always been an educational presentation and, and mostly talking to doctors. In fact, when I was first going on TV, I didn't want to go on TV. I thought we should have some celebrity do it and I, I wouldn't do that. I'm the, the science guy and right. what am I going to do on television? And so whatever, 26 years later, here I am talking about our products. But my, my real focus is always about the products. And I guess that's why I get to do what I do up here, because I know these products inside out and, and sideways, all of them. Uh, and, and every time, and tell. this is a product that's gone through a number of evolutions since, since it was originally introduced about 20 years ago. But it's a product that has incredibly positive reviews and, and it's, an, it's a time of life that I think short of and, and back, and it was especially 20 years ago, I already knew at that time that the synthetic hormones that were being given to women for the symptoms of menopause, I knew that these were harmful and I knew that these were a cause of cancer. And it was something that I talked about and I talked about very vehemently. The, this, the science eventually made the, the first page of all the newspapers. So that's something that I've often said, if you're going to do hormone replacement therapy, and we're talking about the synthetic hormones of the I guess the 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, they're, they're now much less significant in use. But if you're going to do hormone replacement therapy, do it with an experienced endocrinologist and, and use bioidentical hormones. Use the hormones that your body um, knows what to do with and that you could balance and test appropriately with good guidance. Please correct me if I'm wrong, but it would appear to me that whatever we're talking about, whether it's prostate, women's wellness, whether it's CoQ10, there is a significant amount of evolution that goes into every product. It's not something where it becomes or just stays the same for 10, 15 years at a time. Well, if you're talking about the rest of the industry, that's absolutely what you're defining is false. Because if you're looking at the rest of the industry, you could look at products that haven't changed for 10, 15, 20, 25 right. years significantly. Right. If you're looking at my products, you'd be hard pressed to find a product that doesn't get changed, even the infrequent ones, every couple of years. Why do you change them? The science. The science changes. It allows us to do something better. We could reduce the capsule count. We could reduce the size of the capsule. Um, prostate support is a perfect example. That was originally three capsules per day. But then the standardization of saw palmetto changed and we were able to do it in a small single capsule so that meant the price went down dramatically and with our prostate support um, I take prostate support every day it's just one capsule you don't need to take more I know people see how great it works they go I'm gonna take two or three it works so great 
all you need is to take one. Uh, but salt palmetto is an ingredient that the, the clinical studies, the research on salt palmetto is phenomenal. If, if you're a man, as you get older, the one thing that happens <laughs> unrelentingly is the growth of our prostate. It's called benign prostate hypertrophy. It's not a, it's benign, it's not a, it's not a pathological condition. Mm. But as our prostate increases in size, it affects its neighbors. And one of its closest neighbors happens to be our, our wow. bladder and urinary tract. So it could affect our urinary function. And that's why a lot of men wake up in the middle of the night and therefore have issues with sleep and whatnot, um, or they have issues of urgency with urination. So this is not, we often talk about these sorts of issues when we talk about my cranberry product. Mm. And with my cranberry product, it, a lot of times, if I'm with Colleen or Shannon, they think these are, these are just women issues. No, no, no. <laughs> Men also have their share of issues. The, the aging process is the great equalizer. So, so men also have their own issues. So whether it's ultimate women's wellness in terms of the natural transitions that women will experience or our natural prostate support in terms of the transitions that we as men experience, they both deliver benefits that most people don't expect are available from from a product like this but they but they truly are and the reviews speak volumes well we said there is something for everybody and there truly is prostate support ultimate women's wellness of course order yours today if you're watching us you can shop via the phone or of course always go online at hsn.com if you search andrew lessman you'll be able to see his entire assortment of wonderful vitamins uh, and supplements okay. Yeah, I just, I'm looking at questions here. Someone asked, we talked about turmeric before. Yes. And they asked why I don't use the, the bioperine, um, which is another way to supposedly increase the absorption of the curcuminoids in turmeric. The reason why is that's actually using a spice. It's like a black pepper spice. And, and I like to keep my products as mild and gentle as possible. And I don't want to add another spice to turmeric. And, and also the way we make it more absorbable is really following the tradition, which is we just complica complex it with fat and we choose the best fat a phospholipid that's the primary phospholipid in our liver and brain so each of the things we do uh, of course we could do it the way the question was asked with right. myoparine but it's in my mind it's not the best way to do it there's and a reason for everything yeah so we, what we do is as i often say that um when it comes to the integrity of our products, it's, it's not a, a cost effectiveness decision. It's simply an effectiveness decision and whatever the cost is, the cost is. So we just make sure that we do it right so we're delivering the best product to you. Well, one of the things that you can see is certainly a focus of tonight's Monday Night Show, Andrew Lessman Takeover, is the idea of diet and how it can influence us and affect us positively or negatively. Maybe you're watching tonight and you're thinking, I'd like to lose some weight. I'd like to be a little leaner. How can I do that? Andrew just so happens to have created a meal replacement that is the world's finest it is tasty it is great and it has all the stuff you want uh, you want rather and andrew none of the stuff you don't want and it's lower in, it's extremely low in calories which is the key because a meal replacement works because it's replacing things that otherwise were higher in calories also it's replacing other things that otherwise we're probably not a good composition. Ours is going to be low in carb, low in sugar, higher, higher in protein, low in fat, high in vit rich in vitamins and minerals. And we have, we're just, just gonna do this briefly, but yeah. we have three different versions. We have our soy protein version because the research on soy protein in terms of weight loss is the most compelling and convincing research in, in terms of weight loss. But some people don't like soy protein. Mm. Some people are allergic to soy or don't like soy protein. So we have a version that uses whey protein isolate. And then if you want to get the benefits to your joints and to your skin, we also make a version with marine collagen peptides. The soy protein version is the most affordable. And just for a little bit more, I think it's about 5% more, you get the whey protein isolate version. That's the with collagen peptides. and. And that's, so 60 meals is just barely over a dollar a meal, 30 meals is barely over a dollar a meal. And there's the, there's the whey protein isolate version. So the whey protein isolate, which is our most sophisticated standalone protein in terms of say, if you're looking for a protein replacement or protein to add to your smoothie, that would be our whey protein isolate, which we have as a separate product. Um, we use that same whey protein isolate to make our secure. And, and this is only, actually I think it's less than 63 calories because the, 
Um, if I'm not mistaken, the, the whey protein version and the marine collagen peptide version are slightly lower in calories um, than the secure soy protein version. But okay. 63, it's obviously, so, at 63, yes. it's probably one half to one third the calories of a typical meal replacement. And why is that calorie number important beyond just obviously giving you a greater opportunity to lose weight? Mm. Because it gives you greater flexibility. One of the most frequent complaints, it's, it's a good complaint, is that our meal replacement has way too much flavor and it's way too sweet. We do that for a reason. We do that so you could add it to things, so that you could add it to non-fat milk and add berries to it or add almond butter to it or add whatever you might think of adding to it. So you also, because of its power, you get to use less. So you can't fix a product that doesn't have enough flavor or have enough sweetness. So we've made a product that gives you more of the things you need because it's going to be more flexible when you use it. Andrew, what's your, you mentioned cheesecake earlier. What's your other guilty pleasure? If you're gonna have a, a, a treat, what would it be? If I'm going to have a treat, um, I still, well, I don't, I won't eat this anymore. I used to eat bacon, but bacon was, uh, and for me, I'm someone who in, in college, I got my name on a plaque on a wall at a restaurant because I literally ate a four pound steak. No, you didn't. Oh, I, I still, I mean, I was always referred to as my, <laughs> by my family as the human garbage disposal. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm, and I'm. I, I Anybody just, can change, you see. No, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> if if I can be moderate about eating, then anyone can, because uh, I've always been active and always eaten a lot, and and I was able to eat with impunity. Mm. But I always kind of said to myself, "Gosh, it's it's too bad mm. that." I could eat with impunity and my numbers never change because I'm not forced to eat in a more disciplined fashion. Right. Now, reality is set in and as my blog post talks about, I'm forced to eat in a more disciplined fashion and, and I have to say, it's really rewarding. It's like the same reward I get from the exercise I do on a daily basis. Yes. Um, I feel good about being fit and being capable. I now feel good about eating responsibly and having to make disciplined, responsible decisions. It's not so much discipline. I just feel good about kind of being the master of my own fate in terms of my own health. Let's walk over this way. Time yeah. is flying tonight, Andrew. We have like 30 minutes left. We're gonna make the most of it. How do you, um, you understand though, Andrew, obviously for so many of us, we will go to a restaurant, we will sit down, we will be given a menu and we'll look at the menu and our eyes will go to a certain section of that menu. And typically for a lot of us, it's not the salads. We know it should be the salads, right. but we'll go to the burgers, the sandwiches. How do you change that? No, but for me, the way, and it's funny, Muriel and I tend to eat the same way in this regard. Um, my typical meal when I go somewhere is I'll, for dinner say, I'll typically have a, a piece of fish mm. with like tons of veggies. Okay. So I might look at all the sides they have and, and cause I tend to still eat a lot, but I'll get that great piece of protein, whether it's salmon or whatever fish it might be, or even chicken, not red meat anymore. Uh, but then I'll have lots of different, and I, I love spinach sauteed in olive oil. Mm. I love grilled asparagus that, um, and Muriel makes all sorts of great things with kale. And even if she makes me a salad, she might, uh, instead of putting cheese in, what she does is she'll cook egg white and sliced up like whatever boiled egg white sure. is, is just, it, it kind of feels like cheese in a spinach salad or a kale salad. Or, and then she puts little pomegranate seeds in there or she slices up almonds that she sautés that it's very easy to make good decisions. And, and, and those decisions, cause I'm someone who I like food that tastes good. But so my typical meal at a restaurant is just looking for quality protein with quality vegetables. At a restaurant, I typically will never eat a piece of bread. I just don't do that. I don't put butter on my bread. If I'm going to have bread, um, and I'll do that in France, I'll have it with olive oil. Mm. And in France, of course, I'm salivating. They have, <laughs> they have extra virgin olive oil. You'll be there in 24 hours, Andrew. So, so yes, so it's, it, for me, it, making these good choices, it's, um, I never dreamed that the age I am today, I never dreamed that I would be functioning as I function. I feel like my brain works better than at any time in my life. And I look at videos from half a lifetime ago and, and I don't, I'm no more capable then than I am today. And, and certainly I run the same trails in, in Nevada, in California, wherever I am in Colorado, I run these mountain trails and I'm just a little bit slower than I was 30 plus years ago. So I think if we, if we really give ourselves a chance and we really feel good about making these decisions. It's, there's nothing more selfish 
than being kind to ourselves. And there's nothing wrong with that selfishness because being kind to ourselves in terms of our health, that is the greatest gift we give to those we love. At the end of my blog, I wrote that if we were making dietary decisions for those we loved, we'd really be making great mm -hmm. decisions for them, mm -hmm. even if we didn't make them for ourselves. And guess what? Those people would wanna do that for us as well. So the greatest gift, the greatest gift that we give to those we love is not doing something for them directly, but taking really good care of ourselves. I encourage you to read Andrew's blog, wordsonwellness.com is where you'll be able to find it. It's amazing how powerful we actually are. We are very powerful beings when we really put our minds to it and we want to change something. We all know, it's funny, and I know Andrew would agree, but everything that Andrew's saying when he talks about diet, when he talks about choices, really, at the back of our mind, we know everything he's saying is right. So all we need to do is say, I am going to do the right thing as much and as best as I can, and even a small change can certainly lead to bigger changes. Yeah, and, and that's what, it's, it always works that way. It has to be small change. Um, it's these global changes, short of us in a hospital bed having open heart <laughs> surgery, best change after that. But in life, the kinds of changes we make and the kinds of changes that we can retain are those changes that are made sensibly, rationally, moderately. Um, and, and what do they say in moderation? I think it's Oscar Wilde who said this, everything in moderation, yep. Including moderation, indeed, or particularly moderation. It's a great way to live. So yes, and I, so for me, I'm someone who I, I live a very full life, but I live it consciously, consciously in terms of the health of the planet, consciously in terms of my own health as well. I'd love to talk about two items okay. that certainly did not air over the weekend. We didn't. And and we're pleased to do it today. And these are. And these are two products that I take, two products that Muriel Important. takes. Our, our PC, I talked about the active compound that makes our turmeric more absorbable because it's complexed with a special fat. That special fat that it's complexed with is phosphatidylcholine, the product we're looking at right here. Phosphatidylcholine is a phospholipid. It's the principal phospholipid. It makes up two-thirds of the membrane surface area in our liver. And you think, well, that's a big deal, two-thirds of the membrane surface area in our liver. What's the liver? It's the, it's the largest internal organ, but it's probably the size of a small football. But two-thirds of that membrane surface area, that's about eight football fields is the membrane surface area. So you're talking about five football fields of membrane surface area folded into that liver. Wow. So it's an enormous amount, and phosphatidylcholine is the critical phospholipid also in our brain as well. So phosphatidylcholine is one of those natural structural molecules that plays an important functional role both in our liver and our brain. You can't make brain cells without it. You can't make the membrane that surrounds and protects the brain, the sphingomyelin, without it. You also can't make the critical neurotransmitter in the brain, acetylcholine, without it. So incredibly important molecule. It's sort of the most simple, straightforward, affordable way to support your brain and to support your liver. And, and as we get older, I mean, I haven't, knock on wood, I haven't noticed any of those age-related memory changes, which, which strike all of us. But uh, I'm, I'm someone who, who still tends to remember things well. It's, it's a good thing because that's what my job is up here, is remembering all that I know and, and being able to communicate it effectively. So phosphatidylcholine is a structural product that in terms of the function of our liver and our brain, the liver antioxidant extracts, mm. that's a specific product that combines three different botanicals. Most importantly, milk thistle, which is standardized for silly marin, and like our turmeric, we also complex that with phosphatidylcholine because it also enhances its absorption and its bioavailability and its activity in your body. But the liver antioxidant extracts, that's not structural. That relates directly to function and the ability of your liver mm. to repair, replenish, regenerate itself because the liver is absolutely unique in organs in terms of the fact that most people don't realize this. The liver has the capacity to regenerate itself. I didn't know that. So a small portion of liver removed can regenerate itself. So the liver is a remarkable organ and it has that potential, I think, because the liver is doing the toughest, dirtiest work in our entire body, so it better have some special powers. <laughs>
<laughs> this is a small price to pay for wonderful benefits. I mean, really yeah. remarkable benefits. Um, a couple of things, even though you're not seeing all the, I mean, we're, I think, going to cover maybe 20 items, Andrew, well, you know, in two hours. They've been quick, and we've tr I've been trying to answer questions, but I'm going to do, um, we'll probably schedule the first one in May, okay. an online event where it will just be several hours of me answering questions, because oh, wow. I have lots of questions here. Um, in terms, a lot of you are asking questions about specific drugs you take and supplements you can take to counteract, counteract them. There's really nothing to do in that regard a specific supplement to counteract this drug or that drug, but to the extent, especially say statin drugs and antidepressants and things like that, mm -hmm. they act upon our liver because our liver uh, must process all of them. The moment we take even the simplest anti-inflammatory, uh, our liver has to process that and metabolize that. So to the extent that work being done by our liver strains and puts a, a load on our liver, the phosphatidylcholine, and there's great research and clinical studies on phosphatidylcholine and its role in supporting liver challenged liver. The same thing with the liver antioxidant extracts. And, and there's great reviews that I could read or you could read that talk about those products and the results that folks are getting when they get their liver function test, which is something we should all frequently do. Do at least once or twice a year. There's going to be a specific protocol for certain medications because if you're taking medications, your doctor will typically monitor your liver function to make sure everything is going as it should be. Andrew, is there ever, um, with any of the vitamins or supplements, is there any side effects at all? Is there any consequence to taking any of these, that, other than positive things? Well, that's what I often, I, I kind of jokingly um, coined this phrase 38 years ago, mm -hmm. that we don't have side effects, which side effects are undesirable uh, outcomes or undesirable effects right. of a medication, side effects, or some action, an adverse side effect. We have side benefits. There's no difficulty swallowing my products. They don't upset your stomach. But when you're taking phosphatidylcholine for your liver, it's also benefiting your brain. It's, it's benefiting all the cell membranes in your body. When you might be taking circulation vein support for the circulation in your feet, ankles, and calves, it's benefiting the circulation throughout your body. When you're cake, taking CoQ10 for energy, CoQ10 is also protecting the, the cells in your brain. It's also protecting the cells in your eyes. So mm -hmm. all of my products come with additional benefits simply because of how the body functions. And all we're delivering, we're not delivering drugs that have a specific action on a part of your body and then might have any untoward consequence, consequences or undesirable consequences on other parts of your body. We're simply talking about nutrients that are delivering nutrients or natural plant compounds that are simply structural or functional in nature. Let's head over this way. Sure. Andrew, a couple of things I don't want to forget. Boy, we're going to do like a four-hour show and we still won't get through everything. I have no idea how long we've been here. <laughs> um, we'll just lock the doors. Nobody can stop us, Andrew. And maybe after this, if we can, I'm not sure how we're running on time, but we might want to show, just to show the cinnamon, because there are a lot of questions, and maybe we'll talk about it now before we do to, go to immune. Maybe we'll just talk about them. Yeah, we'll do that. We can do that. Or we could just do, we'll do, because I want to just talk about two questions I'm frequently asked. Yeah. Um, because it seems people love to focus on health conditions, understandably. But again, supplements can't treat, prevent health conditions. So in terms of cinnamon, which hopefully that's the graphic up on the screen now. We have it, yes. So in terms of cinnamon, two of the most frequent areas I'm asked about are blood pressure and blood sugar. Um, in terms of blood pressure, there's no real supplement that I'm aware of that's going to make a significant difference in your blood pressure. There are certain dietary things we can do that can make a difference in our blood pressure. Certainly, if we can achieve our ideal weight, as we move closer to that ideal weight, our blood pressure generally will almost always respond positively, as does our, our blood sugar management, our ability to manage our blood sugar. So it, it's something that I wish there was some magic supplement for blood pressure, but there isn't. Uh, watching sodium, even for me, I'm not some, someone who's sodium sensitive, and I monitor my blood pressure. It tends to be low, about 110 over 50 or 55, but it's higher when I eat more salt or sodium. And so it, it's something that if we become really disciplined about our sodium intake and we lose weight, yeah. our blood pressure will respond. Um, our blood sugar management will respond if we can lose weight as well. But in terms of cinnamon, 
This happens to be a botanical, a standardized extract of cinnamon, not just cinnamon spice, but a standardized extract of cinnamon, which a number of years ago, some great clinical studies pointed to this as an ingredient that could help support healthy blood sugar metabolism, help to support healthy insulin metabolism, and, and it's something that we validated, tested, and we've had this product now for probably about two and a half years, and, and it's been incredibly, incredibly popular. Maybe on the bottom of the screen they have berberine there. Yeah, they do which is another ingredient that we've had for about a year. Berberine, with cinnamon, you just take one or two capsules daily. What I do is I empty them into my oat bran. I take two capsules, put it in my oat bran, because it's not, it, it's not as potent maybe as cinnamon spice right. in terms of its cinnamon flavor, but it's the same exact flavor. It's standardized for not the flavor, it's standardized for the the components that deliver the type A polymers that deliver the benefits in terms of blood sugar management and, and insulin management. So it's something that supports us in an area that all too many of us in America now he need help. But berberine, you take three capsules daily, one with each meal. And berberine is something that you really wanna take with a meal because the botanical in berberine, and we've done a few things to try to make it um, a little more subtle, but the botanical in berberine can be sometimes a little irritating to the digestive system, only to probably a few percent of the people who use it. But the research clinical studies on berberine uh, as compelling as those on cinnamon. So you've got cinnamon, you've got berberine, both and, available to order. And what's great is you, you can see sort of the natural colors yeah, here. Yeah, that's why I did this, that. The cinnamon has, here's a small little capsule of cinnamon, and it's this kind of a, it looks like cinnamon, kind of that uh, reddish brown color. Yeah. And the berberine is a kind of a, a pale mustard yellow, and so that's its real color. Yeah, that's its real color. These are these are just natural botanical extracts. So again, cinnamon, one or two capsules a day. Which I open that capsule, I now s smell the cinnamon <laughs> over here. It's unbelievable. And, and the berberine, you would take one capsule with each meal. And, uh, and these are these are ingredients that the the scientific studies, the research, um, have validated their ability to help support and promote healthy blood sugar metabolism and healthy uh, insulin metabolism as well. A lot of people always ask about cinnamon and berberine, so I'm thrilled we could get to that. Um, it is available to order, don't forget. We do want to spend a moment on immune factors also. Right. Andrew, why immune factors? What will this help me do? Well, with immune factors, I always feel like I, I need to talk about this product simply because there are, are folks making, and, and not so much now as in the past, making claims about products that can kind of cure, treat, prevent the common right. cold or flu. And the fact of the matter is, the, we have a very powerful tool to cure, treat, and prevent the common cold and flu. That's our immune system. And, and that's really when you look at those sorts of nagging health issues, what we really need to do is focus on our immune system. And for me, I know if I want to avoid getting a cold or flu, what I do is I just make sure that I get adequate sleep. Right. And that is the first step for me. And, and before my shows, because of course it's not a great idea to be doing um, vitamin shows on television when, when you have a cold or something like that. And I used to be on every month. So, but I would always make sure for the week or so before my shows, yeah. I'd always make sure that I'd be really disciplined about my sleep. And because I'm generally good about my food and things like that. So sleep is one of the most important components. We started this show talking about valerian, talking about nighttime. So sleep is something that's indispensable. And, and sleep, of course, for our immune system. Too much caffeine, caffeine late in the day, eating too late in the day, not eating enough late in the day can affect our ability to sleep. So we really want to pay attention and listen to our body and do the things that helps invite good sleep. We want to sleep in the pitch, most pitch black room possible. The darker the room, and there's all sorts of clinical studies on this, the better quality of sleep, the better, the deeper the sleep, they even talk about the darker the room, the lower your risk of cancer. And that's a whole nother line wow. of research we could talk about, which was fascinating. Um, which I'll talk about that in my online event. No, we it's need really, to, that'd be amazing. But, uh, and, and also we want a room that's quiet, we also want a room that's cool. We want a room that's going to, I always sleep typically between 66 and 68 degrees when I sleep. A cool room, cooling your body down, cooling your brain down enhances the quality and depth of your sleep. How many so, hours a night do you sleep? As I digress here, I, on, my, on my little fitness tracker device, yeah. my, my goal is, and it's amazing how close I come, my goal is seven hours and 30 minutes every night. 
That's, that's my goal. When I started my company, and for the, probably the first 15 to 20 years of my company, I probably mm. slept three to four hours every night. Oh and, my gosh. And I often went a, a day or two without sleep. I would just work straight through the night. So, but that was, I was younger and younger foolish. foolish. <laughs> yes, but um, because sleep is absolutely critical to our good health and there's abundant research that, uh, and here we are talking about our immune fat mm. product, which is nutrients and botanicals and things, but I can't help but talk about the things that are the most important aspect of our immune system function, which is going to be the quality of our sleep, it's going to be our attitude. I talked, started off the show talking about meditation. Yeah. That even when you meditate, you could visualize a strong, vibrant immune system. And there's studies that talk about you can monitor those immune factors in your body, and you can see they are enhanced by that kind of positive activity and positive thinking. So uh, sleep, diet, what we do, what we, our activity level all determines the health of our immune system. All we can do here is provide the nutrients and the botanicals that have been shown to offer support to our immune system. But they're small in, compar in comparison to the things we could do otherwise. So it really is, it goes back to that, that mission statement really of preventative rather than trying to deal with after the fact. It's that I've often said this, you could, you could never smoke cigarettes and you could be uh, cursed with getting lung cancer at right. 25 years of age. But I believe if you smoke cigarettes, you're 25 times more likely to die of lung cancer. It's some kind of outrageous statistic like that. So we want to make good decisions because as I said, good decisions are almost always accompanied by good outcomes. Yes. That, that it's just, uh, as we sow, so shall we ye reap. So we just have to remember, and, and again, I'm, that's why here I am with all these different supplements, but the most important thing I could encourage is hopefully these supplements, and I've said for you, are like the string around your finger. That these supplements simply serve to remind you how powerful you are in terms of your own health. We're not doomed at any point in our life, no matter what our age is. You can dramatically change things if you significantly change, mostly if you significantly change your diet and activity level. It's as simple as that. And the, the rewards are just incredible. Well, I'm going to pick you up on that word diet as we head over this way, uh, because diet and digestion is a problem that a lot of us <laughs> well, deal with, and it causes problems. Yeah, I, the, the way we eat, the quantities we eat, the foods we eat, and simply the, the act of getting older, that uh, there's a whole category of, of medications now, these, they're when, when I was a kid, if, if you, how did, how did you spell relief? It was R-O-L, it, it was yeah. that commercial. And, and that was a, a standard antacid, which was sort of a calcium carbonate based antacid. Yeah. There are some antacids that are aluminum based, which I'm not a big fan of those. I, I don't really think we should be putting aluminum in our body. So you need to read the label because some of those antacids are, are still aluminum based, which actually astounds me. Um, there are some of the more standard ones that are just buffering antacids that deliver, say, calcium carbonate, mm. which is a good standard antacid if that works well for you. But then they have the more sophisticated ones, which are the proton pump inhibitors and all those. Those are things, I guess, like, uh, like Nexium or Prilosec, and then there are the others like Tagamet and Pepsid and things like that. Because there's just millions, if not tens of millions of us that are, are suffering basically from Big whatever thing. you want to call it, acid indigestion, which I think has just been renamed as gastric esophageal reflux disease. It right. seems like the pharmaceutical companies are always in search of a new disease to come up with a new name. It's an impressive one. And and, and those medications, they're very effective, but uh, something we, we should talk about is friendly flora because when you take these medications that disrupt the acid pH environment in our digestive system, it disrupts the environment for our friendly flora, which has a whole long list of consequences. What we're talking about here with DigestiSure, especially if you're taking one of those proton pump inhibitors or something like that, the moment you reduce the amount of acid available, you inhibit your body's ability, you diminish your body's ability to digest food. Because remember, 
Acid is absolutely essential for the activity of the digestion of food. Proteolytic enzymes require acid. So when you reduce the acid, you reduce that digestive capacity. Right. And what we're delivering here, we're simply delivering digestive enzymes. So whether you're just someone who struggled with digesting food and when you eat, it's, it's challenging to fully digest food, or if you're taking any one of those components, but still struggle to feel as though you're digesting your food in healthy, adequate fashion, I would encourage you to read the reviews, but this is a product that's just 100% digestive enzymes. And I would encourage you very sincerely, and the reviews really are glowing in every respect. I mean, it becomes a common sight because every product is five stars. Uh, majority, of course, the reviews just glowing about really the benefits that they bring. But if you are one of the many, many millions of people that Andrew is talking to, uh, I was the same, my mom specifically as well. If you have digestive issues, if you are taking any of those uh, proton pump inhibitors, and uh, that's many millions of us, I would ask you, maybe if this is the only product that you purchase today, to try Digest Assure and see what it can do for you. And this is not to replace no. those drugs. It just works well hand in hand with those, but you'll find that once you enhance your body's ability to, di to digest food, indigestion is just a very simple word, I-N, digestion. It mm -hmm. means things aren't being digested, not digested well. So when you give your body tools, enzymes, that's how we digest everything. That if you really think of the science of digestion, you could put a steak in an oven at 1,000 degrees and it still remains a steak. Right. We put a steak in our stomach at 98.6 degrees. So it's not even warm at all. It's no warmer than our body. We digest that into its constituent amino acids. We could absorb fat and cholesterol from it. How do we do that at 98.6 degrees? How do we perform these unbelievably rigorous chemical reactions at 98.6 degrees? It's all enzymes. It's all done by enzymes. Enzymes reduce the energy necessary to perform otherwise really difficult chemical reactions so that we could perform them in our body. But that's what we deliver here, simply the enzymes that as we get older, dealing with stress, other digestive issues, other lifestyle issues, um, we make sure that you have the enzymes that can enhance the digestion of food. But there were some really good questions here. Um, there was what scientific evidence that proving that my circulation vein support for legs works. All you need to go is to go to the National Institute of Health database and just even type in one of the ingredients, diosmin, and you'll find literally dozens, if not hundreds, of clinical studies. Right. Um, there was, oh, will I ever do a Today Special for Breath Plus? No but we need to, uh, I'll make sure that we mention Breath Plus when I'm here next. That's our internal breath freshener that many people just have fallen in love with. We haven't done it on air for probably 10 years. Um, can you take too much vitamin D? Uh, you'd need to be taking more than 10,000 IU daily to even get close to taking too much vitamin D. Uh, I take 4,000 to 5,000 IU daily. That's typically what's required to achieve an ideal level. A little bit more if you're overweight or obese. Um, yeah, what else? Um, well, there are some really good questions. Um, no pressure, Andrew. No, I'm just going Six through. Six minutes left. No, there's, <laughs> there's, just, there's so many great questions. Um, I answered all those questions already. Um, is it dangerous to have an HDL, HDL cholesterol of 125 and would the cholesterol be able to lower HDL? No, <laughs> at 125 HDL level, that's a dream level of HDL. Muriel has a very high level of HDL as well. It's about 100 or a little over 100. So HDL is the protective cholesterol. So our cholesterol exists as subfractions. Total cholesterol is the, is the entire pie, slices of that pie, LDL, low density lipoprotein cholesterol, HDL, high density lipoprotein. The HDL is the good stuff, the LDL is the not so good stuff. We want the LDL to be uh, as low as possible, within reason. We want the HDL to be as high as possible. Um, my HDL tends to be high, but it's not 125, so that's fantastic. And then our triglycerides, we want to keep those. Uh, mine typically are around 40, my triglycerides and you could extrapolate your VLDL, your very low density lipoprotein cholesterol, that's typically about one fifth of your triglyceride level. So if your triglyceride level is 80, it means that you're probably looking at a, uh, a, tri an, a VLDL level that's probably somewhere around 16. 
Andrew, I so, think the sorry. perfect... No, no, no. <laughs> the, 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 I digress. So many good questions. Um, we should perhaps end on, on uh, kind of the perfect partner, as you were just saying, about Friendly Flora. We actually had that available. Um, again, folks, even though we're bringing this Monday night show, Andrew Lesman Takeover, to a close, I encourage you, all of Andrew's special pricing that's been available for the past couple days when Andrew had his Essential One Today special, it all still exists today. Uh, it goes, of course, um, uh, at the end of tomorrow, it will end. So today is another great day to shop and kind of stock up. Yeah, but I, there was the one question I saw that I, I just wanted to ask, uh, I wanted to answer. It said, we know that drugs tax our liver. And that's because drugs can't be processed without our liver doing a... Because none of these drug ingredients, or most of them, don't exist in nature. And it's just amazing, a miracle, that our liver can do the work necessary. And our liver is like a, a chemical factory that has the ability to de deal with certain kinds of molecules and certain kinds of chemical bonds and things like that. So our liver has the ability to take all these strange molecules we throw at it in terms of drugs, tens of thousands of different drugs, or thousands of different drugs, and process them. So the question was, um, is it the same thing for vitamins? Mm. Do vitamins tax our liver? And the answer is absolutely not. What are vitamins? Vitamins are components that historically, for all times, came in food. Unfortunately, the way we live now, the way we eat now, we're not getting the levels of vitamins we need. In terms of vitamin D, we're not running around naked in the sun. <laughs> so we're not getting the levels of vitamin D we might otherwise have been getting before. Uh, over 90% of Americans who are not supplementing D are deficient or insufficient. Um, B12, not far behind. Vitamin E, not far behind. Same with B. So it, it's, it would go down the list of vitamins. They're Biotin is the same sort of thing. So when it comes to vitamins, again, they're not drugs. They shouldn't be positioned as drugs. Right. So these are not ingredients that are taxing our liver. And certainly none of my products, and the way we've balanced them, and I've answered this before, if we look at my multivitamins, because several of my products now have B-complex vitamins. If you go back 30 years, my multivitamins had five times more of the B-complex in them. But now, because we all take a full family of products, and now because we make our B-complex even more absorbable, we've been reducing the levels of B-complex. So if we take many of our products, you don't ever get too much B-complex. So again, no worries that it's taxing your liver, that it's causing problems. And I should say something about Ultimate Friendly Flora quickly. <laughs> Our friendly flora, more and more science and more and more research is coming out informing us on how our body is really a, a connected system. That the way our brain functions, the way we feel our mood mm. is actually connected to our digestive system and not in the most obvious sense if our stomach feels bad, we feel bad, but on a, a deeper physiologic level that there's a connection between our gut and the friendly flora that occupy our gut and keep our gut and, and all of its components balanced, and the way our nervous system and brain functions. And, and friendly flora, it's always funny to think when we look at the trillions of cells in our body, there are more friendly flora organisms in a healthy human than there are cells in that human being's body. And they are absolutely our partner, our friend. We rely on them for our immune system. We rely on them for healthy digestion. Andrew, what is the, uh, you know, so many of what we've seen tonight and so much of what we've seen, we've covered all these different areas. A silly off the cuff question, but chewable gummies, gummy vitamins. <laughs> are, what, are they any, is that good or bad or not? Well, no comment? The ones I've seen, some of them have natural colors, many of them have artificial colors. Mm. They're all made of some kinds of additives, sugars, sweeteners, they typically have extremely low levels of beneficial compounds, so you're consuming this big gummy to get yeah. virtually little or nothing. In fact, something I've tried to do and I've looked at, I mentioned this to you before, that I'm trying to take my 91% chocolate that has virtually no sugar in it, taking healthy chocolate, which 91% chocolate is basically a 91% extract of the cocoa bean right. with all its health benefits. And I'm trying to figure out how I could add vitamins to that. I'll do it, Andrew. So maybe if someone wanted, really insisted on a chewable vitamin or something for kids, right. give them healthy, healthy chocolate. 
Andrew, that would be huge. So, but that's something I've been working on for a couple of years. We're still not close, but we're working on it. Okay, two quick things. Yes. First of all, I know our producer Steve wants me to remind everybody about CoQ10. Um, it's certainly going to be important for me since I'm on for a big four hour extravaganza. And, and I need what, the energy. What I'm going to ask afterwards, um, I know they were talking about maybe rebroadcasting this again. Yeah. Um, and I'll maybe do this tomorrow yeah. so you get a chance to see all the questions again. But I'm going to see if they could even find a place to put this on our part of the website because I ran through a lot that of questions and things and it might be an opportunity to be able to see that or have someone you know watch this. So Andrew, with only 40 seconds left, let me end on this question. Sure. <laughs> I always like to end on a big question for Andrew. By the way, we don't prepare these questions. We don't. So. He has no idea what I'm yeah. about to say. Andrew, what do you believe is the key reason to the Andrew Lessman brand's success? on HSN? Um, oh, it's simple. It's just, it's, I've always said this, it's just integrity. It's what you see is what you get. That whether it's our approach environmentally, whether it's our approach in terms, we didn't even talk about the fact that every bottle that you get of my products, we donate two bottles of prenatal vitamins to a needy mother in the world, a quarter of them right here in America. So that, that it's, we genuinely set out to make the best products possible. Uh, we do our best to keep every single person that touches my products, that consume my products, as happy and as healthy as possible. And I'm, these online events that we'll be doing in the future are really all about giving the most important thing I believe that's necessary for good health, and that's more information. And so the more we learn, the more we have an opportunity to make good decisions. It is a real highlight and truly a pleasure to do these shows with Andrew. Thank you so Thanks, much. Thanks, Adam. My pleasure. Safe flight to France. We'll yes, see you, you in uh, April. We'll be back in April, yes. Mr. Andrew Lesman, stay with us. The Monday Thanks. Night Show continues right after this. It's a tale as old as time. Papa? And now on March 15th, HSN presents Beauty and the Beast like never before in this year's most anticipated shopping event.